Hey everyone, this video is about the Casio Z1GR from 1997 and the Z1GR was the successor to the Casio VX4 which I have another video on and like the VX4 it was designed for teaching programming to Japanese engineering students and the Z1 is similar in functionality to the VX4 uh, it supports basic C and assembler but unlike the VX4 it was built on a 16-bit Intel chip it has 32k rather than 8 kilobytes of memory and the Z1 was sold in large numbers in Japan and there are a lot of these for sale uh, second-hand on Japanese auction sites and there were two variants of the uh, Z1 sold by Casio there was the Z1 GRA which had a higher contrast display uh, and there was also the FX890P uh, that also had a higher contrast display and 64K of memory and perhaps that was designed more for professional users. And like the VX4, uh, there's no official manual in English uh, but there is a manual created by the community and it's based on translations of the Japanese manual as well as materials from the FX880 and PB2000C manuals. And physically with the Z1, Casio moved to a grey plastic case and it looks okay but I prefer the black plastic of the PB2000C or the metallic look of the VX4. And the Z1 is a similar size to the VX4 at 20 by 8 uh, by 2.5 centimetres and it weighs 350 grams with batteries. On its left side is a, a physical on off button. Uh, and there's also a proprietary parallel interface and serial port. And there were a wide range of peripherals the Z1 can interface with. Uh, there was a floppy disk drive, a printer, and a plotter. And on the right side of the case is a uh, contrast wheel uh, for the display uh, and a port for a, a power adapter. On the back of the case, uh, there uh, is space uh, for uh, three screws. And I've taken these out uh, so I can remove the back panel. And so uh, this provides access to two uh, battery compartments. So there's one for the Ford uh, AAA alkaline batteries and another one for a backup CR30232 uh, lithium battery. Uh, and there's also a memory expansion slot. Uh, and you can set the switch in the middle uh, to the left to protect the device while it's traveling. Uh, the right setting uh, uh, to um, make changes to the batteries and the middle uh, to use the device. And uh, the Z1 has the same resolution display as the VX4. 192 by uh, 32 pixels and this supports 32 columns by four rows of characters uh, which is okay and as you can see the contrast on the Z1GR screen is not that great uh, and in low light it can be difficult to read. Uh, the keyboard has a fairly standard layout for a pocket computer. On the left is a QWERTY keyboard uh, with four cursor arrow keys uh, and there's some keys for function memory. On the right is a numeric keypad and there's a section for scientific and memory operations. And there are uh, two shift keys. Uh, the left one uh, has to be <coughs> held down uh, to work and the right shift key uh, can be pressed and acts as a toggle. Uh, internally the Z1 uses an Intel um, ATL188. EB CPU and this was an early low power 16 bit chip uh, compatible with the 8086 and being Intel based uh, might be the most interesting feature of this device. As we uh, all see we can program the Z1 in Intel assembler uh, which would have been a great learning experience for uh, engineering students. So like many Casio devices the Z1 is highly modal. Uh, when you turn it on the device is in calculator mode uh, but you can hit the menu key uh, to switch uh, to basic, uh, NC and so forth. Or you can hit the cal button to go back to calculator mode. In, cal in calculator mode you can enter arithmetic expressions. Uh, 
uh, and you can assign to variables and use them. Uh, there's also um, a function memory. Um, so I've already entered um, my favorite equation, the full distance equation, uh, and you can use this by hitting the calc key and uh, you'll get prompted uh, for variables and uh, the calculator will output the result. And basic on the Z1 is more powerful than the VX4 with uh, more similar to the Sharp 850S. Uh, so it has uh, support for uh, labels, which is very helpful, and also has more advanced control structures such as multi line if statements and while repeat and switch statements. Uh, so I've entered basic mode from the menu, uh, and we, now we can switch between uh, 10 program spaces. Uh, using uh, these uh, P keys. Uh, and so I'll select P0 uh, and uh, in P0 I've got the uh, solution to the N Queen's chess problem. Uh, so I can hit edit uh, to view the source code uh, and I can edit it line by line uh, and if I hit break I'll break out and uh, we can hit run to run the program. And so I'll skip to the finish now uh, since it takes uh, 1 minute and 40 seconds to find a solution. And so it's found a solution now and this is approximately twice as fast as the VX4 uh, but it's still a little slower than the Sharp G850 which I have another video on. Uh, the Z1 also supports uh, new graphical commands uh, like circles and rectangles. Uh, and in P1, uh, I've got a program uh, that will uh, just print out a bunch of circles uh, in a loop uh, and wait for a keystroke. Uh, so I'll break out of that again and I can run that program. Uh, and the basic on the Z1 is not really extensible, like say on the HP 71B, uh, but it does support the val f command, uh, which can evaluate uh, basic expressions. Uh, so in uh, program space P2, uh, I have a simple uh, REPL program, uh, which reads in an input line and prints out the result of evaluating the input. Uh, so if I run it, uh, I can type in an expression and uh, the output will get um, out, uh, printed out. Uh, and uh, you might easily imagine how you can create your own uh, customized calculator, uh, like say an RPN interpreter for example. And interestingly the Z1 doesn't support a file system and I find this uh, one of the biggest limitations of the device. And the Z1 also supports the C programming language and to enter into C mode we can enter the menu key and then uh, the number 3. And C on the Z1 is dramatically faster than on the VX4 but it seems to support the same implementation of pre and C language and like the VX4 one difference from standard C is that the language doesn't support imports so many standard functions from standard IO, standard lib, string H and math.h are just available to programs without any imports needed. And again the environment supports a number of different uh, programming spaces. And so I've entered a program to solve the same in Queen's problem in C. And to view the source code, uh, we can hit S. Yes, uh, and yeah, we'll enter into a full screen editor. And as you can see, uh, the hash define preprocessor macro is supported. And C functions are declared uh, pre and C style. And again, this program uh, uses a bunch of uh, standard functions. So for example, uh, there's printf, uh, but no um, hash include is needed. And the Z1 doesn't support uh, the backslash character. Uh, so for example, uh, with backslash in the end of line, um, we use the yin symbol instead. Uh, and if we break out, uh, we can go back to uh, C mode. And to run it, we first need to hit uh, load. And uh, this will compile it into bytecodes. Uh, and then we can hit a run. 
And you can see it runs considerably faster than the basic version, and we'll skip to the end now. And so the program finished in about 42 seconds. Uh, on the Z1C doubles uh, are 64-bit double precision floating point numbers, uh, so they're quite useful for math programs. Uh, it's odd that a device from 1997 didn't support standard ANSI-style C declarations, but programming C on the Z1 is really pleasant, and I still find C is my favourite language to program on a pocket computer, and especially on the Z1 where you don't need to worry about adding artificial line numbers to your source code. And Z1 supports an assembler for its native Intel CPU, and this is available through... Uh, menu item 5. Uh, but before we use the assembler, we need to allocate memory for machine language, uh, and then we, we can do this in the uh, assembler uh, console. Uh, so we can allocate memory using the clear command. Uh, and I've entered a um, solution again to the N-Queens uh, problem in um, 8086 assembly language uh, that I found on the HP Museum site, and I'll include a link uh, in the video description. Uh, and we can view the source code, uh, and it begins by declaring where the machine code will reside in memory, so at 2000 uh, hex. And then there's a bunch of 16-bit uh, 8086 style instructions. Uh, and at the end of the program, uh, we uh, declare uh, two uh, data variables and that will reside in memory. Uh, so one is for a loop counter. And the original code runs a solution search a thousand times. Uh, and uh, I presume this was so it could be more easily timed, but I've changed this so that it only runs once. And then there's an array of nine bytes that are used to store the solution state. Uh, and so to uh, assemble this, uh, we can enter A uh, from the assembly menu. And uh, it's probably possible to run the code from the assembler console, uh, but I haven't been able to find any documentation around that. Uh, but I've entered a companion basic program, uh, which calls uh, the assembly routine. Uh, and then after it calls it, uh, there's a loop which uh, prints out the 8 bytes that represents the solution. Uh, and so if we run that, uh, we'll see that it runs almost instantaneously. Uh, and if you run uh, the 1000 uh, versions of the loop, it takes 68 seconds, so it's only taking 68 milliseconds for each solution. And that's more than a thousand times faster than the basic version. And uh, the Z1 also supports a CASL assembler, which was another teaching tool that creates bytecodes that run on uh, the Comet virtual machine. And I, I have a demo of that in my video about the Casio VX4. And so in summary, uh, being one of Casio's last pocket computers, uh, the Z1 GR was fairly mature and had a lot of options for programming, and in, in particular its implementation of C uh, is really good. Uh, but it did lack some key features of other models, such as a file system and the ability to extend the basic language. Uh, but with 32 kilobytes of RAM, it wasn't as RAM constrained as its predecessor, the VX4. Um, if you are going to uh, find a, a Z1GR, uh, I recommend looking for the uh, 1GRA uh, variant, uh, which has a higher contrast display. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, and if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.